Good. We got everybody here. Put the meeting to order. The item on the agenda is the budget. Unless anybody has any additions or changes. Okay. You want to first? You wanted to talk a little bit about uh, town meeting. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, talk about town meeting. How we want to do it. We do not have to commit to it tonight. We we'll have we have a little bit more time. But we have enough time. Okay, but I expect me. And is there any other items? So what's the governor going to do? The bill is before him to have a town meeting by Australian ballot again. They're going to do that for a different scale elections year after year from here on out. So. Uh, there's no further items. Maybe, I mean, we ended up right at the highway, but if you want to go back and you have some information you learned and added. It's yeah, good. we made a couple changes and I uh, haven't pointed out uh, one that's still a pending change. So, trying to be a little bit brief about this, the big dollar changes uh, have been with the uh, change in the highway equipment reserve fund. Uh, that's going to be a little bit cheaper than my early estimates had. Next question. And what's the reason for starting that? Uh, two reasons. One was, uh, uh, let's see, one was the, the pickup truck was incorrectly assigned because we just bought a new pickup truck. That pickup truck was originally assigned for purchase yeah. next year. Oh, uh, and it still was in the accounting for next year in that okay. earlier draft. Uh, and the, uh, the the other big change was we're delaying the screener for the gravel pit by. Uh, uh, it needs a few repairs and some work, but it still functions right now and. Uh, you know, with our ideas about hopefully being able to bring in an outside contractor to work on this, uh, we should be in pretty good shape for, for that. Uh, so that'll make best use of the uh, of the these you know, So those are the big dollar changes. The, the dollar change that was requested last time that is not properly figured in right now is uh, rental income from the old house. So that's line 50, 50 that's 20, that's 0, 0, 0.18. Uh, does not yet reflect the 6% increase that we asked for. Okay. Uh, the other big one is uh, removing the community economic development coordinator position out of the office administration salary and placing it in its own line item. So that's now on line 138, 50-7-05-10.10. Uh, we said that we're probably going to take that out and have it voted on independently, but it's still in there currently just for evaluation purposes while we're looking for the effects of cuts. Is there an impact on salaries and benefits? Uh, that does include both salaries and benefits, assuming it's a full time position with the town contributing 50%. The 40K does? It's the 40K. The 40K covers all that? All right, yeah. good. That's a little bit variable. We might pay a little bit less. We won't pay any longer. Until you hire me, you don't know. No. We don't know what the salary is. We don't know what they're choosing for insurance. Yeah. You know, that, that's still a, a, a potential variable. Okay. Um, and that will be, yeah, and that, that's an option for coming out. Uh, there's still the effect of. Uh, Donna's new rates are properly accounted for, both in uh, for town minutes and also for uh, minutes for the racial justice committee. That's what that. Okay. Uh, that's a huge change, but that also. Yeah. 
the three will bring us up to speed and up to the highway department. Anybody have any questions that you think before we go live? There was a request to sort out all of the expenses for the historic society under one. Oh, that's for rearranging and putting the whole into one. I know that's not going to change the number. Of Where is Racial Justice Committee? Racial Justice Committee is on their expenses are held on line 195. And their revenue is on line 57. Thank you. Uh, this does increase their assigned tax contribution, but it's not actually a change in their requested amount. It's just going to reflect a larger increase because their the what we were paying for their minutes used to be tucked into our other minutes. Yeah. Uh, so their ask hasn't changed, but we're now properly assigning. Right. All of their expenses to the committee, and they should know this whole thirty-three hundred is not something they can spend because a certain amount of that is. They do. I've talked to the Sophia about it, and she understands okay. that we are not granting them more money for right. projects and other things. We are not just accounting for their current expenses a little bit different. Okay. So, so uh, when we are we're looking at highway, so this begins on line three forty three. So I'm going to run through the highway department, and then we're going to loop back to the quick. Uh, that is a pretty simple part of the highway department. So. Those kind of go hand in hand, but we got to do one of them first. So we'll start with the whole department first. Our first big item is the highway salaries. Uh, this includes our increase and, uh, you know, uh, uh, a fifth employee. A fifth employee with a pretty decent assumption of what their wages would be. And do you have the assumption you used to always have an adder for next January of 3% or something? Did you also include that in this one? I did. Give me one second to pull this up. That would need to be in the office salaries as well. It is in both. And it is the same amount. It is uh, 3%. Of so course, this is a variable that we don't know where it's going to fall because we got to negotiate. Can't control it. But this this does give us a little bit of wiggle room because it, it is uh, budgeted with a fifth employee. So that's a big question for the board. Uh, we're looking to make some significant change uh, savings. We could take out some amount of money for that fifth employee, but it, it might limit our wiggle room with the negotiations too. Or if we fill the position, um, the, the board had decided back a couple months ago that we didn't want to fill that position until we had an idea of what its effect was going to be on the budget. So this is that effect on the budget. Uh, and like I said, it assumes that the position is going to be kind of middle of the road with salary. So uh, it's something we can come back to, but as it sits right now, we're looking at a was it about a three percent increase in the budget, which is uh, oh no, we're still at five point six percent. Okay, but amount to raise by taxes is about six and a half percent. Yeah. Uh, so if we need, if we want to cut more, it's it's a place where we could come back. To. Yes. Uh, and this again does currently reflect what the increase would be 
if we had the CEDC, which we talked about voting on separately. So that, that will come out of the proposal. All right, so that's our current highway salary. Uh, all these taking vacation time, 15% of the same value. Class four road labor. Um, at one point, this was added in as a, uh, a budget item for tracking how much we were dedicating uh, to labor on class four roads. Um, we haven't been using it for that in quite a while, but it is, I would say, it's inconvenient for us to use this as a line item to track labor on class four roads. Even if we wanted to increase the amount of labor we were doing on class four roads. Um, there's another class four road flag that comes up a little bit later that we'll talk about this again. Can we remove this? Looks like there's no activity over years. Uh, I think we can stop reporting it. We don't need to show it in the report. Yeah. There's no historical thing to do that. Yeah, at this point, it's. You know, highly tracked so many years back, uh, and it has no activity in any of the tracking years. Social Security and retirement are defined, unemployment is defined for us. Insurances, uh, again, this is an estimate based on what the fifth employee might choose. Is that based on a family plan? Or? Uh, this is based on two persons. So that's quite an increase over the current year, but yet the health insurance. The health insurance rates went down. We had some changes to the uh, insurance that's being claimed by some of our employees. Uh, between changes in personnel last year who were uh, not taking insurance mm -hmm. or taking a different classification of insurance. Uh, Okay, so even though the rate went down, the selections the, the selections selection changed to increase. Those. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have anybody left who's cashing out. I think everybody's now taking insurance. Oh, yeah, there is one. So okay. Um. So that means it's going to affect our current budget too, because it goes into effect this calendar year, which is not our fiscal year. For six months. Yeah. Your estimated year end for 22 probably should be uh, adjusted. Point. Ouch. Yep. Uh, Beth, that's the wrong direction. You're supposed to be looking for <laughs> the other direction. I did know what I said. Our uniforms are pretty stable. I think that we're going to be in decent shape for this. Uh, you know, our uniform company has been. Pushing at us a little bit to address some more expensive options. Uh, but with the stuff that the guys actually like to wear, you know, we should be the level. I don't know, that's part of the that's part of the contract, the union contract. Uh it wasn't. It may I, be. I'd have to go back and look at our personnel policy again. Uh it has been our standard practice. I don't actually know if it's in our personnel policy or not that we provide this. But we have been yes. providing uniforms for a long time. It, it is in our personnel policy. Okay. But well, everything will be on the table next negotiation. Well, they just agreed to go by the personnel policy. So whatever we had, it's what they agreed to. No, no. Yes. That may have been a mistake. All right. Uh, buildings and grounds, pretty straightforward. I've increased our maintenance budget a little bit. Um, you know, but I think that we have been learning about some more maintenance related issues. Uh, that we'd like to be able to have a little bit more funds for addressing those as they come up. Uh, so we're increasing that to handle it. Next section, summer roads. Uh, we're seeing a little increase to tree brush removal and mowing. Uh, we saw some really good effects this year and 
uh, brush removal. Uh, Brian, on that buildings and grills, that's under the highways. Yes. Um, if you look at historically, we haven't been spending, you know, we're in the $3,000 range. Uh, what kind of added buildings and grounds? Are you thinking like the flooding issue? I'm hoping that some of the flooding issue and some of the other relatively minor things, uh, you know, the touching up the salt shed uh, to make sure that that okay. has better seals on it. Uh, the, the bathroom over at the highway garage. The furnace. Okay. Okay. I think the furnace is likely to be expensive enough that that has to go into our, our capital buildings and grounds. But I'm thinking that we've got a number of smaller maintenance issues, but we've got enough of them that I'd really like to okay. work on trying to get on top of all that. Okay. Uh, so seeing a modest increase, but I I didn't anticipate this being enough of an increase to replace the furnace on this. That's going to come out of our capital building structures. Okay. All right. Uh, tree brush removal has seen a small increase. Um, to better reflect the rental price for the boom mower uh, that we got really good effect out of. Uh, this year, and it's cutting back a lot of the brush. Uh, there were a couple of issues with uh, clearing some of the brush and things that we cut. We're thinking that if we do it at a different time of year, that they'll, we can reduce that and make it a little bit easier to keep it clean. Uh, and we're also going to try and get on top of the whole town uh, and kind of a little bit sooner than we had previously planned. Uh, improving sight lines and other things that we, people usually ask us for. We're also going to be looking at ash removal. Yes. And it's probably an increase. If we're already six months to date of the current budget at 6,200, is 6,000 going to be enough? Uh, I think it will be enough. We don't usually do this twice a year. Uh, this is usually a pretty dedicated project that we should be doing in the spring, but we've been doing it in the fall. Uh, but we should move this to start doing this in the spring. Uh, so we might be looking for, we'll see how the budget's shaping up this spring, but we're hoping to have enough money to uh, contribute a little bit more this spring if we can take money from like other line items and then start doing this in the spring going forward. Well, I guess my thought is we're probably going to be even more aggressive going after the ash trees. And if we, in the current year, have already at nowhere near as an aggressive level, spent sixty two hundred. That's why I'm questioning: is six thousand enough for the next year? We do also have the next line item is our face of species manager. Okay. Which has, which has another five thousand dollars dedicated for master. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. I should have looked ahead. Uh, we will be trying to do better about combining the two of them to make sure that we're making. Kind of the most effective use of our of the time that we're dedicating to tree brush cleanup. Okay, you have done some of that cleanup this year, haven't you, Jason? Yep. You didn't spend any money on it. What's the money for? Is, is it for rental stuff, or is it? It's not. Their labor's not allocated to it. Labor's not allocated to it. It's okay, rental right. rental and other costs that we have to pay for disposal or. or or anything else. That's why there are additional costs of that. Okay. This is one that we probably could have when we created this. It probably could have fit pretty well into just increasing the tree and brush removal. But we we like the idea of being able to track it separately. You know that it's I think we had a request from citizens to separate it out now. Like, Thinking about it. In, in the conversation, we thought it would be useful to describe it. I don't remember if it was citizens or the board or how it came up, but we thought it would be useful to describe it as its own category. Um, but it is very closely related to other tree and brush. What are we renting? A tractor and the lawn. For tree and brush removal. 
Uh, not, not for invasive species. Well, we are, oh, we're going to try uh, to take some of the money from, right? Yep. What we talked about. Take some of the money from that line item to put it in to when we rent the tractor. We do take down some ash trees and stuff like that. It'll take down eight inch trees. So this year we took down some ash trees with it on the roadside and the right away. I asked because if we have a tractor, are there things we can buy that would over time be worth the investment and cut our total expenses? And that maybe isn't a question for the answer for the moment, but. It is something we're interested in. Uh, there's been some debate about how much use we would get out of the moving forward, whether it's worth the expense for us to own it versus it. We don't get that much use out of it, but we don't mow that much of our own property. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to dedicate more time to mowing our own property, we get more use out of it, we save on, on more mowing expenses, uh, and it would become more worthwhile, and our new tractor would support equipment like that. Uh, but for, as of last year and this year, well, last year we did dedicate more of our own time to it than we had in the past. But in the past, we usually had Alex coming out to do Alex or, or somebody else doing the same. In the past, we rented, we hired Herb uh, Robarge to come up with his tractor and equipment to do it, but he could only, he, he, it was a lot more money. And he could only do a shorter stretch and it's cheap for us to dedicate our labor and running a tractor. And to answer your question about the boom more, they're hundred to 150,000, but they're pretty high maintenance. So I wasn't suggesting to buy a mower. I was thinking if we already have a tractor, for example, an attachment to a tractor, I understand it's still expensive, but over a three year period, is it less expensive than we're paying in rentals? Uh, six thousand over three years is eighteen thousand. Yeah, it's a hundred to one hundred fifty thousand for the boom or just the attachment. Just the attachment. Mm -hmm. Then you got right. the maintenance. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question, but as of right now, we we would have to start mowing a lot more of our property for it to be coming on. It's okay. We don't have to keep talking about it. Yep. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh. Not a lot of other chart changes here. Our gravel and stone, I'm increasing by a little, by a modest amount. Uh, we will be, we are likely to have some changes here when we're bringing in folks to help us manage the gravel pit. That'll free up some more time, but it will cost some amount of money. Um, uh, we're so over budget on this because we overbought. Uh, this past year for uh, for gravel uh, because we didn't make any of our own. We didn't make any of our own, and we, we bought more than we uh, are going to use on a single bit. Twenty two thousand dollars extra. But how much more did we really was, bought? Well, one of the reasons we had to buy is because we did not have anybody certified in the mine. Okay. I'm I, I'm not sure if we could have if we may have been we may have we are not currently allowed. I don't remember when our certification expired. Yeah. Point, but we don't currently have anybody with up to date certification. We could not open the mine again today without some support. And there was also a heavy consensus that it was an inferior product and we needed to right. purchase it. Not what I mean. And it's limited lifetime too. Sorry to believe they call it a gravel pit of mine. I can always think of going in there. So, so do we anticipate getting certification? That's a great question. I I talked to Brian about it, and I guess that hinges on the fact of what we're doing with the pit. And we're we're heading in the direction of that, I guess, because we talked about it in one of the meetings. We got what two to five years light left in that pit, something in that range. Closer to the five, probably depending on how much we take out. If we if we do what we did before and we got half sand tomatoes and half, it'd be closer to the five. So 
is it, in your opinion, worth getting the certifications to get back in there? It it could it could be. I like Evan's idea, and I'm a strong supporter of having an elk come in and get get the stuff out of there that, and get it processed to put it over in our lower staging area. It's only big enough to hold it, so it's just done. And we, well, we wouldn't have to not for a while unless you get, if, if everybody decides that they're buying the if Johnson's buying the other piece of land and decide if you're buying a screener or not buying a screener at all. We're just it all hinges on if we're buying a section of property or not. I guess in my eyes, I would before I could give any answers of what. So well, it's, it's so, an unknown at this time whether we're going to purchase it or not. Which is why I'm, I'm thinking a, a relatively modest increase that we will. I think if we can commit to getting more out of our pit this year, that, which means the guys are going to have to get served. Or we bring in an outfit from, out from the outside. My opinion on that is that we should get our guys recertified. It's not that much money for our guys to completely class again. The greatest expense is you know losing a day in, in classes for a couple of days. Um, losing a few days in, in classes versus being out on the road. Then even if we have people operating the pit for us, it's especially the first year that we're working on that. It would be very helpful if our guys have that certification so they can work in and around the pit, work with the guys, kind of help explain the lay of the land, what we know about the pit and everything else. But our guys don't have the certification, that all becomes much more complicated uh, to, to man. So it would be useful for us to maintain certification at least in the short term, whether we contract out for extraction or whether we do it ourselves. But no matter what, I think that we can commit to getting more out of our pit next year than we did this year. Before we move on, I want to go back a little bit. Yep. We've not increased either paving maintenance or uh, paving capital for a, a few years. Um, with the price of petroleum going up, what do we think the price of tonnage is going to be on paving? And I mean, we struggle with the current budget. We lose ground every year. Yes. Uh, if we had endless amount of money, we put a lot more into paving. And and the argument for the maintenance was if you put more, more money into maintenance, it saves um, repaving. So I'm just questioning whether we should be adding any money to those line items. Uh, yeah, we could use them up. We get we expand it. We get more paint done if we have more money. Your right. thoughts? <clears throat> I talked to Brian this fall about some ideas, and uh, he was waiting to find out from the village of what we were doing on railroad street before we made any big decisions of where we were allocating money for paving. And what we were doing as far as the plot. So. Yeah, the, the next paving project that I would really like to undertake is Railroad Street, which requires coordination with the village on stormwater. Uh, because they need to make a few, they have some stormwater maintenance that they need to do in, in the same area. Pavement needs a, uh, some repairs, so trying to coordinating getting this all done at once would be uh, great effect. I think we talked about that in the past, that all that concrete needs to be ripped up. Yep. It's going to be a big, big job. Big uh, project. It would be eligible for a class two paving grant from the state. So uh, I don't know what the village would need for their stormwater work, but our, we would be able to subsidize our paving with grant. Do you think ninety-five thousand is enough for one? Uh, we didn't spend this year's uh, paving money, so it. I think it would be, and it definitely would be, if we combined this year's and next year's. We often get paving done in the summer, where we can pay our commitment to the contracts out of the current year's budget. And fulfill the balance of the contract of 
the next year's budget uh, so that we don't have to pay for mobilization and get more kind of bang for our buck. Do you honestly believe that we could do anything like that with the village before they even have somebody on board? I am, I think it would be a challenge. Uh, because I don't think they would be able to do the stormwater work without getting a grant on their side. You got to coordinate our grant with their grant and where they don't even have anybody for you to talk to. I don't see it happening. I, I think it's very likely that next year we move on and we pay something other than rail coaster. Yeah. Uh, if it's a class two road, it'll be eligible for the grant. If it's not a class two road, uh, we'll be paying for it out of pocket. So what's the priority list of needs of paving? Uh, we certainly don't want to lose something like Hogback. We, we invest a lot of money into that road. Okay, we just did graphics on them and we did some touch ups on it uh, the year before last. We reclaimed uh, up by on um, Overhill as you drive up there, that mm -hmm. we were up to do road. We reclaimed that and we didn't pave it this year because we were waiting. So we potentially, that's ready to be paved. Yeah, we did. Uh, what do you call it? We did uh, plot road, but we didn't yeah. do anything on uh, Overhill. I thought we weren't in it. Uh, I think that our, if I remember the conversation, that it was, you know, that we could decide <laughs> that the reclamation was going to be necessary and complete, whether we repaid it or not. And there's no distinction between where the little black top ends and the dirt begins, from what I recall. And at the time, there, there wasn't. You really couldn't tell the difference because um, it really needed. We needed the sub base built up, which we that's when we that's what we did when we added the gravel and had this, all the reclaimed it up. So it's not necessary to be paid back. No. Is it necessary, do you think? Well, if you drive up there when it rains, you can see all the sand and gravel. Washing off the road onto the apron out to the stage road because yeah. there's no That's area for it to cheat grain off, you know, before it gets to the main road now. Sure. <laughs> I know Hugh was adamant about not paving it back, but if I voted, I would I'd like to see it get paved back if it was up to me. The same, the same amount. At least up to that second driveway up there, like it was. It, it would be nice if we go a little bit farther, go right to the intersection of Duke Road there. So it would be a, you know, everybody would know that that's where the definition is, not just in a random spot by that driveway. Uh -huh. I'd like to get back to Railroad Street for a second. We've been talking about this since I got on the board six years ago. We haven't got any further now than we did when I came on board. You know, I would like to see, you know, the new board make that a priority and to get that straightened out. And uh, it's obvious it's going to have to be a contracted job from start to finish because I don't believe the, the village has the wherewithal to even figure out that uh, stormwater system when they would fix it. And they would have to get somebody else to do it for them. And it's going to be expensive. And so uh, it's not like an in-house job. For them, other crews could do it, but I don't think they they could. Uh, so it's going to have to be strictly 100% contract. They might be able to do a few little cleanup jobs or something as part of it, but they're not going to be able to do the whole thing. But I think that it needs to be a priority. Uh, we've had people on that street that have been mud puddles and everything there, and water splashed on there houses for years and years and years and uh, it's a crying shame and uh, I certainly hope that the new board makes it a priority. I think that if the voters approve hiring an economic development coordinator that could be a, a good focus for them because it's going to they're going to report to both the town and village they could really coordinate some uh, grants and move that forward. And that's that's where you'll see something like that happen. Well, you know, and it's a good point that you made. And, and uh, the goose that laid the golden egg is going to last forever. And uh, these grants that we are used to 
eventually are going to dry up someday. And uh, we need to strike while the iron's hot uh, to get as much as we possibly can to, before they're all gone. So it could be the dead worse. But I guess my question was do we think anything should be added into the uh, paving and maintenance? Of paving? So uh, if you, I think maybe the best answer for that, since we're going to meet again on Monday, uh, why don't we bring you a couple suggestions about what we would pay if we had a little bit more money okay. to pay? Because I don't have, I don't have a good evaluation. And Jason, if you got some ideas, I'm happy to hear it. But I, yeah, I do, but like we haven't talked about the evaluation because we were waiting on the, the grocery site. Well, one thing to talk about, and I think it's probably on your radar already, is that, and everyone's radar, frankly, because it washes right under Route 15, <laughs> is uh, Collins Hill. And I don't think it needs to be paved, but it definitely, like, whatever, their driveway coming down the hill. We need to get that sand off the bottom of Collins Hill. It's dangerous for everybody. Okay, I'm pushing tonight. Monday night I might be your enemy. Not advocating for paving, but we'll see how the numbers go. <laughs> I think it'd be it'd be a great thing to be able to allocate more money to it, but with such exhaustive increases in so many other areas, it would be difficult. I think it may just we're not moving that at all, even with inflation. That, that's a concern I have. But we didn't use any this year either, so we got that money, right, Brian? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and again, that's fairly difficult for us to spend all or part of uh, the budget over two years. That does mean that we have a big paving project every other year rather than every year, but we have found that to be the, the most effective way to use the funds that we do dedicate to it. Um, it if it's capital, right? Yes. Capital. So we do the maintenance every year. Yeah. 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 The maintenance, we just, we use that every year. And then that one's easy. That one, but that one, yeah, we do more patching. We have more money. Okay. Uh, let's see. The depression project capital. I have later. Is that? Uh, Dust control, 369, we're perpetually spending quite a bit higher. I was going to bring that up too. Then we're budgeting, and but we continue budgeting the same. And we're projected at the same we're budgeting for this year. Even the, though I thought we paid more for this year. Both Brian and Hugh believe that they had some controls that they could do to bring the cost down. We have not seen those savings yet. Um, we keep hoping. Right, keep hoping. I talked with Mark about, I'm assuming this line pretty much for chloride. I talked with him pretty extensively about it. I believe everybody here respects him as a creator operator. He made it pretty clear to me if we're spreading any less chloride than we are right now, it's completely worthless. We would just do away with it all together and let the roads wash away. If we were to spend, if we were to spend less, if we were, he said, yeah. if we do anything less than a thousand gallons a mile, and maybe my numbers are slightly off, I, you could no, sure, can't do on. Doing great. Um, he said it's completely worthless. And I don't understand everything behind it, but he said it builds a cap of a hard surface of the road, and he's a lot more passionate about it than I am. But, <laughs> um, I do believe that that budget needs to be increased. I was going to bring it up if you did not. If you look at our actuals, it should be up around 40,000. Yeah. Um, 12,000 more than what we're budgeting. If that's what we're actually spending, we should reflect it accurately in what we're budgeting. We haven't spent 25,000 on that since 2018 summer. So the the concepts of we we're hoping for some sort of savings there. I guess what is is there an expectation that that'll come to fruition this coming year or if it's going if we're going to see anything it'll be this year. Okay. Um, I don't think that we've got anything new to try. Um, 
What do you think, Jason? I think that I would, this year is going to be the year to tell if we're going to do it the way that me and Mark and Ryan were all taught in grade. When we went to grader school, we all went to the same one mm -hmm. uh, about doing a thousand gallons a mile and grading the way they showed us to see. And we have not, to, we started doing that last year and stuff was holding up better toward when Mark started. So, but I charge certain people were doing it a certain way. So, uh, I think it would be beneficial to have a little bit of extra money in that for that uh, line item just because the cost of it, the product itself is, goes up, especially this now after COVID, it's everybody's excuse that I talked to on everything. It's all going up anywhere from 17 to 20% on everything I, hmm. that we're getting. Change to everything. Well, let's, let's at least budget the 2021 actual. You're saying it's 42,000? 42, 43, yeah. The thing I don't understand is as of well, recently, whenever the last budget file came through, we spent $5,294. Is that just in July? It's from July to current. It's, it, it, it's they usually do it in the spring. They're mostly done in the spring. In spring. Right, it's heavy loaded on. Especially the way you do it before. Yeah. It's not really evenly spread throughout the year about how we spent that money. We definitely had some go through in the fall because, yes. uh, I mean, working from home, right? You look at your window and you see the spreader go through. It goes through in August. Uh, we don't, we didn't, uh, like I said, I think we will see a closer to the number that is budgeted here this year by doing it the way we did it last year because we didn't, by doing it, by grading and spreading the thousand gallons a mile, the roads are lasting longer. So they're not having to get graded every three or four days and we're spreading 600 gallons on it. So that, that's, I think you're, it's going to be a big difference. I guess. Okay. So okay. potential savings there. So, so you're saying there's potential savings and you're hoping to get it around the 20,000? I think the 20,000 is a little low. But I 35? I <laughs> What are you, an option here? <laughs> well, listen. Oh, 35, 33, okay, 32, okay, fine. If we split the baby, do there there some two and the 28, 35? Yeah. Probably, or less. Yeah. Or less. Well, if it's less, you look I mean, say less is better, right? In the end, then yeah. if it's less, you look great. If you come Unless back. Unless you need it at the end of the uh, year. 14, no. Yeah, I, I mean, I think 35 would be fine, and we could. I feel yeah. I'm in last, but I feel that'll be a definitely don't think 28 will cover. I think with the cost of like I said of how they're I don't I can't say hundred percent I'd rather have it us have what uh, left over than yeah. have not enough. What's the board's pleasure there? Over 35. So over 35. I'm a little bit. <laughs> All right. Uh, our construction project sample we have planned for this year uh, is let's see the the project on uh, Fox Lot, which we'll finish up with grants and aid. Uh, then over, which is paid for, but will be paid for for better roads and. Uh, I think that might be it for what we've got with our Rocky Road wouldn't win here. Rocky Road. Uh Rock, no, we Rocky Road, yeah, will be paid for out of the bridge components. Okay. And Lendway Lane, is that part of uh, Lendway Lane? Uh it is possible that there might be more money in that program. Uh, but when I talked to the program administrator, he was Asking what our our first priority project was, okay. and my impression from the conversation is that we should count on more than one project. But if we do get more than one project, we'll also see a corresponding increase in uh, revenue. So we should we should be able to make money and money out. 
Where's Scribner Scri Scri Bridge coming out of? Uh, uh, that'll be the bridge of culverts. Okay. We have enough there to do that? We don't want to do that. Meeting's over. There you go. Yeah. I'll just keep everybody in the dark. Uh, let's see. The next, uh, we'll get to bridge of the culverts in a second. The next one up, guardrails. Um, you know, this is one that we're limited. We're limited a lot by time on replacing guardrails. Uh, they're not it. There's another one that we could, we could spend more money than this, but they don't tend to be terribly high priority. So we don't, I think this one's fine where it is. Class four road maintenance. Uh, we've been budgeting 2,500. We often don't spend that much. Uh, that this often comes down to time again. Uh, Getting back to my question for the lights went out. You think we have enough money in the bridges uh, and culverts to take care of that scribble bridge? Couldn't get there yet, Mike. Yeah, let, let me circle back to that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a little bit more explanation that goes along with it. Uh, our MRGP compliance. Um, this should be good for paying for our permit fee. Mud abatement, we had this is one we have seen uh, some pretty effective uh, savings. We used to spend a lot more money on mud, uh, but improving the base of the roads and a couple other changes, we, we've seen a lot of improvements in, in the minor side of it. Uh, and more direct the roads too. So. So should we reduce that to 13,000? Yeah, you're saying 18, that, but then all the numbers in recent years are way higher. Well, there are two things going on. What do you mean recent years are way higher? No, I think what Brian's referring to is we used to budget like 30,000 in here. Well, for mud abatement. There's no mud abatement. Def, def, definite, uh, different than spring roads where we're dumping and making them up. I think we, mud abatement was started special a handful of years ago, just to rebuild the base of certain roads, which perpetually, every single spring, we end up dumping thousands and thousands of dollars of gravel into. So we spend it here so that we don't have to spend it on the gravel. Line. I we, I, or the yeah. summer roads. Line. So you're not going to see the savings here. You just keep spending here so that you keep saving there. I okay. Makes sense. Seems like we're not saving much on that other road that we're talking about. But. Uh, we're not saving as much as we would like with it, but it has been pretty effective at making the roads more gradual. We haven't seen the cost savings that we that we'd like to see. That kind of blows the whole thing out of the way, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's why I think something to remember is these roads are old. We used, we used to yeah. have springs where, I mean, they were literally just mud hole. They had to be closed and all that. They're certainly a lot better. The reason I was suggesting thirteen thousand is because that's what we can spend. That's a little bit closer to what we've actually spent. It's closer to accurate. Um, I understand that. Still a prediction. I'm good. Yeah, large thirteen. I'm good with that. I think so, but I mean, especially if we're giving a little increase to dust control and some of these other things, where. They often go hand in hand. We see a little increase there, a little decrease here. They'll hopefully a little more accurately reflect how we have to spend the money. Does everybody want to do that more the 13? Yep. Do you, you think it's a fair? I do think it's fair because all the work we've done has helped. We don't spend as much there as we were. Okay. You have another project in mind for this year for my data? We got a couple spots on. Uh, but uh, overhill that has that will be so much mud abatement. There's a couple. Oh, well, it will be a mud abatement. Right by Fox Lot, there's a spring that's always in the road it, all year round. You can go up there and see it coming out. So we want to put some under drains in. Yeah. So I just and we do a section of road with that mud abatement under that. So that's one of the spots I'd like to tackle. Yeah. Yeah, it's that kind of thing. That's really good. Uh, winter roads. 
Yeah, can't we reduce the salt line? Oh, you're ahead of me on that. I'm trying to keep <laughs> ahead of that. Keep right ahead of me. Uh, parts and supplies. Sorry. Uh, we haven't done the parts and supplies yet. Uh, let me skip over it, did I? No, you didn't. Okay. So, winter roads, uh, starting with winter parts and supplies. Um, we are using our tanks a little bit less, but we do need them. You know, that it, it's still not something we can. Uh, I'm not sure that we can really see a reduction here, even though I hope that we will be reducing. Uh, I hope that we're going to reduce costs, but it's a little bit of a risk to actually take money out of this line. It's, Which line are you talking about? Uh, parts and supplies. Winter oh, parts and supplies. Thanks. Sorry. Well, does this include like you know last winter they or towards the end of the winter maybe I don't know where it would fall they took the grader around it has a special bleed it does and then not all the pet nets and stuff that are usually put on for the trucks and I called about and they've all gone up about seventeen percent with the shoe of two of what they were paying last year because of the steel prep so yeah. this one I hate to see you guys lower too much yeah. Yeah, I think that we're, I think it will be lucky if it comes out of the wash in terms of money that we're saving and money that we're spending. Uh, and it's a pretty essential line, so we really don't okay. want to see a reduction, even though I'm like, I hope we spend less money here. Uh, I think it's too early. Uh, yeah. Uh, winter sand, um, we're in good shape for this one. I don't think we're going to need a change next year, but it's only is you know costs are rising, makes it a little bit more expensive. But hopefully, with uh, and everything that's going on, we'll be in decent shape for this. Winter salt, the cost of salt is rising, but we're hopefully going to be using less of it. Uh, so this is a good one that's fit for some discussion. We were supposed to save thirty percent, right? Yes. Why are we increasing? Uh, yeah. I had increased it because I had had a chance to. Jason and I have, have not met. Yeah, we, we haven't had a real discussion about this yet. Uh, but forty-five thousand dollars would reflect our current usage of salt. Well, thirty percent minus uh, from forty-five thousand is thirty-one thousand five hundred dollars. But so, there is going to be an increase. There's going to be an increase in fuel care now. How much you think? That's a hard decision to, or a hard answer to answer. If you go by what they're saying right now, the cost of fuel is probably going to go up. You know, this this summer is what they're saying. But you're talking about something of seventeen percent increase. That's the cutting edges and stuff like that. That's what they're saying, just for steel. the steel. Steel. Um, so what if we lowered that to forty thousand? I I'd be very comfortable with forty thousand. We haven't seen a year yet with the. Uh, I think drawing and so on. Yeah. We really need to see a year before we That'd be 9, Well, I mean, our past That's actual was, yeah. Our last full year's actual was 25,000. That was an unusually low year. Well, the year before was 30. Yeah. And the 2019 was 50, though. And that was 50, so presumably well, there must be some left over in the shed from year to year. Yeah, there was some left over this year. We're just, uh, we just used it up as far as the quantity the last last week, and we're just barely getting into this year's. We're probably 20 ton or so into this year's. So well, 40 seems like it'd be plenty, but maybe we could go lower. You feel comfortable going lower? Well, Evan, I was just talking about 20% out of the 36 now. And that way we don't, you know, we're compensating for some inflation, holding for 30% savings. And it's a demonstrated process. High parts do it. Last year's number also could be a little lower uh, as the road foreman at the time was doing some more sand on some, like plot road last winter didn't have salt on it. Uh, just that section right there, and I'm not saying it should have sand or salt. I'm just trying to explain. explain. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're 
We budget more money for salt than we do for sand. So you said what, 30, 36? 36, why don't we just go 38? I was going to say that. I just was waiting to see if it was going to be 36. <laughs> I was going to Is everybody comfortable dropping that 38? It's like a I'm shooting for 15. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're comfortable with that. It's not magic, Brian. <laughs> magic, Brian. All right. Next one is Bridges. Here we are. Uh, Bridges Contract Services. So this is the money that we'll spend on the bridge. The hope is uh, we are out right now for the grant to pay for the engineering studies to do work. The hope is that we will be able to get that and execute it before the end of the fiscal year, uh, which is why we still have $35,000 in this fiscal year. Um, the right now, this is planned for uh, being paid out of our uh, bridge and culvert reserve fund. You know, the, the engineering study and the repairs themselves, that's a good use of our bridge and culvert reserve fund. Um, so if, it, if there is a change here, it's not going to result in it's money and money out. If we just have to spend, if we get the construction going, Great, we can take a little bit more out of the reserve fund and pay for the construction costs. If it's not going to work out, uh, we can eliminate both the, the withdrawal and the, the spending. We cancel it. It basically doesn't mean back the bottom line because if the money doesn't come in, we don't spend it. Right. Okay. So uh, I don't this is to yeah, no. Mike's question uh, do we have enough money? I think that was your question. I can see this turning into a big project. We don't. So this is our match. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is our match. We're, we we cannot afford to replace any bridge, let alone the covered bridge, without assistance. Right. Beth, you want to put a question? You look that bridge over very close. It's not that really like that, do you think? Underneath, it's not the, the carrying beams are not, are not, but the, the bridge itself, <clears throat> the ties that come down, they got some pretty good thermite damage or hand or whatever. The yeah, carpet tight 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 tight. Yeah, we've sprayed those a few yeah. times and they're coming back. Um, yeah, my question I don't understand the numbers on this one, then, Brian. If that reserve fund is is uh, contract of services and then the reserve fund is zeroing, like netting each other, virtually netting each other. How can we have a subtotal of 89,000? Um, where's the subtotal of 89? Uh, oh, sorry, okay. 391. Well, oh, you're looking at the year end? Uh, uh, sorry, no, my bad. Okay, nope, that's a total. You're good. I was not looking at the right thing. Okay, okay. Yeah. Are you all set? Yeah. Okay. Are happy with that? Period. At least we can be. Next section uh, for equipment. Um, mostly level funding here. The changes are really coming in from our uh, the donation to our capital equipment reserve fund is increasing by seven thousand. We've been increasing by seven thousand per year for uh, quite a few years. Uh, hopefully, that's going to level out when we switch to a percentage rather than flat dollar amount. But our our reserve fund is. Reasonably healthy, although it is going to hit a low point in a couple of years. Uh, we're getting pretty close to that low point. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the reserve fund. So, the purchase of large equipment, uh, here we'll go to our uh, 
Are those from the Senate? Uh, or the, the outstanding equipment? Uh, right now, we are paying for planning next year to pay for uh, the panel we just replaced, the new salt truck, the tractor. The, the last tandem we replaced, and the tandem before that, and the greater is due for replacement. So that the new cost that we're adding to it is the, the greater. Uh, the greater is pretty expensive. We're going. We have a recent quote, but we're going out for uh, a more recent quote just to try and get a handle on this exchange pretty rapidly. Uh, Jason said that we just talked about Hyde Park, but they had a quote from, you know, about as old as this one, a quote from last summer that they just completed the purchase on and they did risk $7,000 over the next few months. So we're a little bit concerned about that. Some of that might rebound, but. Yeah, I hope, I hope it will. Uh, the availability increases. You know, I hope it will be a little bit better. Um, Raiders are pretty specialized, expensive pieces of equipment. So I'm hoping that adds to their stability. But we'll see. It also might mean that our old grader becomes more valuable. So. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. I had a town reach out to me. It's going to come and look at it and purchasing it. They got a 1990 grader and they want to upgrade. You give them some numbers, and they were about thirty thousand dollars difference in numbers, like those from one to the other. So I was going to talk to Brian to see where I guess we wanted to be at, and kind of go off what North Tracks was allowing us for. You know, North Tracks was going to give us eighty thousand dollars for it, and they'll pay us more than eighty thousand dollars. You know, which at least very worth the amount. Yeah, you give them a range from seventy to a hundred. Yeah, and they. I told them I was like, well, without seeing the information that we just talked about, I couldn't give them an exact number. But I told them to come check it out, and so they're planning on in the next week or two to come take a look at it. What sounds interesting? <sighs> His name is Mark, and I'm pretty sure <laughs> oh, yeah, that name is right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's in Houston, but he called me on the cell phone at night, and I didn't have a pen, and he was writing me down. Yeah. He was telling me back. This, this, uh, Monday. Yeah. So we, should we think about increasing our capital equipment reserve fund expense? I don't. Well, that's another one I want to look back a little bit. I think that might be a worthy thing to do with some of our cash on hand. I don't think that we need to make that change for our regular expenses. But okay. when we're talking about our cash on hand, yeah, we still have what is it, 130. Thousand uncommitted. About that. Uh, so we could put some of that towards uh, a capital equipment fund, which would boost it up a little bit, and then we could maintain the same contribution. We wouldn't see in uh, two years that twenty thousand uh, balance. It would be pretty low, but that's. But well, we're going to go over this a lot. Yeah. 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 yeah we've got. We got a couple big areas where we're, we're going to revisit, revisit that question. Uh, then we get into our other projects for recreation field mowing and non highway projects. We we'll we level fund it. We usually underspend this, uh, but it gives us a healthy amount of money that we can contribute to. Other our articles are unchanged from what was approved at town meeting. No new petitions came in. We didn't get any new petitions. Uh, nobody asked for increases. Uh, there are a couple in here, either three in here this year that were not in the written budget last year because they were being voted on at town meeting. So it shows a significant increase when we go from budget to actual, but there's actually no change between what the voter approved last year and what's proposed to the voters this year. 
I had somebody bust my chops about these uh, yesterday. I said, uh, we could save $33,267.48 to get rid of all of it. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, you, you look at Lamar County Home Health, okay, 2000 bucks. They do so much, it's just unbelievable what they do, okay? And then you got the North Country Animal League looking for $10,338. Right? Or did I get wrong? Uh, you're on the wrong. I guess I, I get home health is 10000 Aging is zero. Yeah. Uh, the Vermont Council on Aging combined with the Loyal Home Health a few years ago. Okay, so I got the wrong one. Yeah. Uh, their appropriation combined. Yeah. Lamoille Home Health is 10,300. Yeah. They combined with another. Yeah, Charlie, go ahead. Honest Meals on Wheels in particular, their food is inedible. The seniors here stop subscribing to it. I've talked to people that used to get Meals on Wheels. No one can eat this stuff. They don't use They, they find the good cooks. And the woman running it is not doing a good job. Charlie, the opportunity to bring that up is at town meeting because we really don't have much authority here. All of, all of these nonprofits are approved by the board. The opportunity would be to bring it up at town meeting and ask that they be uh, removed from our budget. When are we going to have a town meeting? If they have that voting uh, by mail, we might not even have yeah. an in person town meeting again. I mean, that's the discussion we're going to have tonight. Are we going to have a town meeting or, or Australian ballot? Uh, so, but it really is up to the voters. I'm not sure that's exactly right, though. That the, the voters approved it for the first year. And by convention, which is fine, once it's in there, it's something we keep it in, which is, I think, what most towns in Vermont do. Um, you're right. It's We could remove it. We could, and we have in the past when the voters gave us a haircut, we. We, we cut from there some portion, but I, I do. I've, I've, this has always bothered me, but not enough that I want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, that I, I think really ultimately you should take that $33,000 or whatever it is and say, instead of just fixing our allocation to every single one of these organizations every year, we're just going to take so many cents on the grand list and say a penny, a, you know, a penny and a half, 33,000 is about a penny and a half. Say a penny and a half on the grand list in perpetuity will give to charitable causes. Uh, but then you've got to have somebody figuring it out exactly where to allocate those and to who and somebody to say, well, actually those guys aren't doing such a good job anymore. And these guys are doing, this is where the need is. I'd like to see something where there's a little more thought into I mean, what, what we could do, uh, the reason they're in our budget and the reason we're at where we are, where we require them the first time to be approved by the voters, is years ago, every single one of these used to be a standalone article. Yeah. And the town meetings were <laughs> brutal because you'd argue over $800 for some nonprofit, right? And so we came up with the concept that, okay, if the voters approve it once, we'll put it in our budget and it'll be there. What we could do is remove all of the nonprofits and have them as a whole as a standalone article. And yeah, that's voters, a good idea. Then the voters could up or down it. And, uh, and as Rocky Cooper used to say, the voters in Johnson never vote anything down. So they'll vote it up. Yeah, but at least it take, kind of takes the board off of our three more minutes. Well, we are. I'm sorry. I mean, it's a penny and a half on our tax rate just for nonprofits. And I, I think for the most part, they're doing, they're providing really useful services for people at Johnson. Uh, I really do. Uh, but it's the, the set it and forget it sort of model is not terribly efficient. I don't think. Good point. Thanks for bringing it up. But it's a good discussion to have. The board wanted to pull all of them out, 
and have one article, a standalone that just lays out each organization and what they're asking for. Yes. I think that'd be a good idea. Or support that. So the idea is put that thirty-three thousand shell the town of Johnson allocate thirty-three thousand dollars in a certain way. Yeah. Your idea. It is going to be either at all. Not exactly. <laughs> that was not exactly my idea. I would actually like to see them vote. So I hate to make this worse, but I'm going to make it worse. I would like to see people vote for each individual line. No. Say it again. Why not? That's the way it will be there till eight thirty at night. Arguing about whether we give two fifty to the animal shelter or to the seniors. So it always is done. But you know, your point was that uh, to carve that out and have one thing. Is it going to be an all or nothing deal, or it will it will you give the voters uh, just like Charlie was talking about meals on wheels? They didn't think it was a, a good bang for the buck, and we cut out four grand for that. If it's a standalone article, some voter could amend it to. Minus some number that would eliminate one of these nonprofits, you know, minus eight hundred dollars and not fund whatever they could amend it, but the article uh, would be printed showing all of them, and then a, a voter could amend to remove somebody, and they would vote on the new total. I could see that turning into kind of a oh, it'll it'll be a there'll be more discussion on this than there is on our whole budget. There'd be yeah. no discussion about school school. I'm not sure it really accomplishes what I'm trying to describe as the problem either. They're proposing the voters of the town to just allocate half a penny or a penny on the grand list to nonprofits and rules merit to delegate it where she sees fit. Well, that's the thing is you need somebody to delegate where they see fit. I'm not sure Rosemary wants that headache. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he, he she wants that excited headache. About it. She doesn't she want did. that headache. And, and, uh, but if there was some group that says, you know, I mean, this is what we do. Kind of, what we, what we do at my, at my company where, where I work. So, so here's your budget for the year for this. And you have five people who decide, you know, they take requests and say, oh yeah, this is uh, this qualifies, this doesn't qualify. And how much? That involves setting up a new committee, which is a pain in the focus, and I don't think we should do it. And how many that? What's that? And how many of you? Yeah, it's declined. You're not going to be able to find me on March 2nd. It's not here. <laughs> I mean, all these groups are not really asking for a whole lot, but when you add them all up, it comes to a pretty good amount of money. $33,000. Yeah. The only one that asks for a lot. Compared to everybody else, is the last person. Home health. Home health. Okay. And they do the most. I mean, they, they are a lifesaver for a lot of people in this community. You know, anybody that's ever dealt with them, you know, they have only the most amount of praise. And, and when my father was dying of cancer, they were there all the time and uh, helping them out and helping us out. I mean, it's a wonderful organization. Yeah, I agree. I certainly wouldn't want to cut them out. But I so to move on, what do we want to do with these nonprofits? Move it in, pull it out. There is a separate article. We already kind of pulled us on that. We all approved it, and then Matt kind of got cold feet over there. Right here, right? Yeah. It was not really exactly what I was doing. <laughs> We gotta go with it. Let, let the voters decide what, what they want to do with it. You know, they, they like I said, some was mentioned to me, and other people have mentioned it to me in the past. And um, but I do agree with you. It did take a lot of time years ago when we went over every single one. Uh, you know, you could spend a million dollars and and nobody even say a word, but you get to five hundred bucks, and then it gets tied up for an hour. And so. Uh, I see your point, but still. I remember one year we debated the school budget with Judy Schultz used to present it and everybody's eyes just glazed over. They didn't know what she was talking about. It'd be for so many million dollars. In 20 minutes, the budget would pass. And then we came to one of these articles on a nonprofit and we sat there and discussed it for over a, a half hour or something. And it was like $1,100 or it was ridiculous. 
Yeah, I, 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 I go with setting it aside. It's a it at least gives people the opportunity to find that and say, yeah, that's good, or yeah, we'd like to reduce the overall spending by some amount. That's fair. Just like Charlie said about he didn't like the meals anymore. The meals on wheels. There might be three or four other people in the audience that says the same thing. And if we pull it out as a separate article, a motion could be made from the floor to amend less than whatever meals on wheels gets. Sure. Give them two thousand instead of four thousand. Whatever. No objections to doing that. Great. Thank Thank you, Matt. Great idea. When we review the <laughs> draft warning yeah. on Monday, I'll, yeah. I'll write the warning to reflect that. Thank you. I'm the one that mentioned it, and he gets all the grief. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it's always been, Mike. Yeah, that's what it should be. <laughs> Uh, hey, I have hard stuff at six. Okay. So, um, you, don't, you don't have to stop anything on my behalf, but I just want to get you. You might be done with the Yeah. It's conservation conditions at 6 30. Okay. You want to go over the capital equipment and then we'll do the cash on hand? And... Sure. What's our bottom line on our spend? Uh, bottom line on which our spend is uh, 3243 uh, that, yeah, that's our proposed spend. It's an increase of 5.6 percent. Right. That will reduce 33,000 for the nonprofits, it will reduce uh, 40,000 for the economic development. So, we're talking 73,000, it's going to come right out of that. Yeah, and we, we split it up as different items. Um, you do a really quick formula and see what that would change the percentage to. Well, it wouldn't touch it much, but maybe 5.4. 5.5. Yeah, no, I'm just going to do the same thing. Thirty-three through sixty-seven forty-eight. It's going to get added back. It's going to look better for the. Taking those would change the uh, dollar amount to three million one hundred seventy one hundred seventy thousand, and give us an increase of three point two percent. That sounds much better. That's huge. Yeah. And that would change the. That would give us a one cent increase in taxes. Cool. Thank you. One cent. Wow. Well, if everything else got approved, it would not. Yes, that's actually. true. But at least we are, this is our budget that we're bringing before the voters before they possibly put an addition to it. So, Until they get their tax bill. <laughs> what'd you say? Until they get their tax bill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. On the reserve funds, uh, let's see. Reserve fund. I have the one change I've made to this going forward. Uh, I'm increasing the amount that I'm anticipating that we'll spend on interest. Uh, I only need to increase it by one percent, but uh, our end of year has been a little bit low for a couple of years. Um, and I think that that's mostly because of interest that we're not doing it. We're not calculating enough for the interest payments each year. Um, well, we're, we're calculating enough for the interest payments in the given year, but overall, that's where I'm concerned about our, our, our estimates. Also, if you think they're, they're coming a little bit more expensive, we made all the corrections each year, everything's turned out better than they expect it to be. Uh, it's easier to see on the color version that's on the screen. Um, everything marked in red is an estimate and everything marked in blue is a, a just. Now isn't, I thought we were gonna go through this and, and I don't think we actually brought it back up at another meeting, but all of these loans that we have for six years needed to be corrected for five. 
correct? Because we can't. They should have all be corrected for five years. So the they... so the backo we're not going to have a loan out until twenty twenty eight, and then the tandem seventy six hundred whatever for the tractor. The next time we replace that, that's not going to be out for six years. You're right. The, the backo I didn't fix. Uh, it looks like it's calculated correctly as a five-year loan, but it's applied over six years. I just didn't look at all the formulas and everything. Yeah, so I'm looking at the formula right now, and it's... It's good catch. Because the tractor is not going to be out for when we replace it. And, yeah. well, I don't have the years, but the sheet that you gave us, where we end up with 46000 in the reserve, uh, the, the tractor, tractor wouldn't come off that yet. The tractor looks like it's only over, that's over five years. And those are known values. We do, we have the loan for that. Not so in the one that you gave us. Sorry, I'm looking up the line. Uh, it could be. That could be. Oh, the 2000. 18 international dump truck 7600 tandem. Not that 18. We don't kiss it. We don't have an 18. It's a 19. On line 10 and 35. So we can push it back a year altogether. I like it. Yes, but it's a 19. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. The replacement for that beginning in 27. Uh, that's a calculated amount. So I'm not going to remove that because I'm not sure if that affects the. I was just saying. I don't know if that's on ours. We had it out for six years. It should. It is on six years. It should only be on five years. Um, but with, I'm gonna have to look at the formula how it's calculated. Gotcha. Uh, to make sure that that's. Is it worth getting some of the corrections done before for our next meeting? Yeah, yeah. It, it all hasn't done before the next. Meeting. They haven't changed the bottom line. So all those calculations are right. Because I guess looks like. we, we yeah. would like to see the changes and make sure it doesn't change any bottom line. Well, the, the none of these are going to matter. So the earliest one that looks like it's six years and not five years is the backo. Yeah. Is the backo. So none of these are going to change until 2028, 2029. At which point the fund is is the 2017 pickup. Is that just on there because of the old pickup? It is. Okay. What is the current year? Because I didn't have that. Uh, 20, 2020. 2020. Okay. And then the, the tandems are 19, 20, and 21. They're one year apart. That pickup. I know it's not going to change the long term, but that's not going to be replaced until 2026, 2027. I don't think it's going to change our long term outcome. But that's what the motion was, was to replace it one year early because it was a piece of crap. But we were going to extend. We were going to extend until like, last another year. We were guaranteed when we purchased it and we purchased it from a person who's no longer employed with the town so it's hard but planning we should stick with this might be I agree. Fully. So push that out to I can push that out here that, that makes our, our fund a lot healthier that really saved us for that lean year um, also Brian removing that sixth year does change your net cost at the top, and it also kept, uh, changes the averages at the bottom. It will. So I think both of those things will make it healthier. That that will be. This is like a nightmare to project, and I think you've done a great job. I, I appreciate it. The six year. I don't remember. I'm not it's okay. confident about why that got introduced, but at some revision, we we ended up with an artifact of six years. Uh, when you're looking at changing schedules, and yeah, it, I cleaned it up in some places, but I, it looks like I didn't clean it up very well. And I don't know about the town guys down there, but when Beth and I went and toured, there was 
a heavy emphasis on how an all-wheel drive grader would serve the town a lot better. I don't know that much about it. And I don't know if that changes costs, but I just, it's something the employees brought to Beth and me, and now it seems like the right time to shoot ourselves in the foot and talk about it. Uh, we have an estimate, but we are going with a few changes from the estimate that we have. So okay. uh, that we will be getting a new one, hoping that it's going to be okay. But uh, the estimate that we had included changing the controls from a steering wheel to a joystick, which is about $25,000. Uh, we're eliminating that. Here's a joystick. No, we're going to go from Cupid joysticks and we're going back to the steering wheel. Yeah. We're saving you. Oh, really? <laughs> We're eliminating that, but we do want to include a uh, drum roller uh, that compacting in the same run that we do the grading on, we think is going to have a significant impact in That was brought up too, but I didn't pick that one up in larger club. I forget that one. You got that pretty well made already, right? The drum roller. We've got a discard that we. No, but I thought you were working on a drum roller. We were, we were going to work on one until we uh, looked into the what the towns have gone to, and they've gone to a walk and roll setup, which is a it's a multi wheeled roller. So they all go into different like say you're you're right in the road and there's some potholes, so it compacts the pothole so you can do it every pass. So it lasts longer, which should help us in the chloride sense. But the machine is kind of expensive, uh, and well, it's a different attachment. Yes, yeah, so it's attached to the back of the grader, you know. But it could be cost effective. Yeah, it, it, it is very cost effective. Uh, Stowe has one and they absolutely love it. Yeah, so was invited us down to check out they were relatively new grader. Yeah. Wolf has got a brand new grader too. They said we could go up and take a look at it. But they could just let us borrow it. We don't have to buy one. Borrow one and I. So this is the first grader that we purchased with a blade on the front. The, the intent was to be able to push out gravel and the dump trucks dumped it. Right. What, what are your thoughts on how well it's worked? It works pretty good, but for the most part, since I've, I mean, the eight years I've been here, we've always spread the gravel where it doesn't have to use the front blade. Okay. And you could, well, anyone had seen the greater the paint still on the front blade, so I don't know if it's been used heavily. So is it worth? Yes, I'm going to get a quote for you guys. Keep the one that was there, and we're going to get a quote where me and Mark are going down and get the options that we both think that are best for us and the town mm -hmm. and give it to you. Uh, and I was going to get, we're talking about going with uh, getting John Deere, Cat, and Case. Mm -hmm. Everybody, the town's always gone with John Deere equipment for the most part because of Rick Lahoyer. He, me and Mark are talking about saying we don't know how much longer he's wants to come work on it and you know he's concentrated a lot on the sugar inside of it so we were going to talk to him too because that was the always a deciding factor to go with the deer because he was a local mechanic for us but if he's going to limit you know if he's going to step back eventually like i think he's gonna there's really nothing saying that we can't go with case that's lawyer guards or cats you know timmy sterner's getting done too right we're not what I've, I've heard rumor of that. That's why I want to talk to Rick before. Yeah. My guess is price will keep us out of cash. What's that? My guess is price will keep us out of cash. But that'd be good to know. I, I would say so, but they were cheaper on tobacco when that came up, so I don't know. And the and Volvo? It's not. It's More so doesn't like their Volvo for a lot of different reasons, I guess. So I was going to talk to him, but I. So it's just questions. Yeah, I, I mean. We have a good estimate. This is a good estimate. This is not the final one. This is still an estimate. But it is a, an estimate based on a real quoted purchase last that uh, this just this past summer. So it will change a little bit, but I don't anticipate it changing dramatically. Lots of stuff is happening though. So uh, I, I could be entirely wrong. Brian, um I have had some questions about some of the numbers too because yeah. I have an old version up and like the row 29, the uh, 2022 international. Yeah. Um, that one previously was thought to be a $36,000 cost over five years. Yes. 
and it's gone down. These are the actual numbers on for my little scale. Okay. And then what about uh oh, so the same is true of that one? Oh, that's a blue. Okay, sorry, I forgot the blue card. No, this one. Uh the yeah, the last copy we looked at still had estimates for uh the international uh, uh both of the, the replacements that we made in 2021 uh, were still estimates. Okay, cool. And then row 38 is the um, John Deere grader, and we just don't have that one. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep, it's, it is still an estimate, but it's a better estimate than we had before. So if we have an updated version Monday night of this, yep. that will give us a better feel for how much. We should pay cash on hand. We want to put in here if we need to. That's true. Uh, I do not anticipate, based on how long it took us to get the quote from Nortrax, I don't expect to have a new greater quote on Monday. Okay. We'll go out for them, but it took us longer than that to get. But as it, it took us uh, several weeks to get the quote. Yeah, I don't see them having it for me by Monday, even if I reach out from first thing in the morning. Yeah. So as of right now, we think that that quote's pretty close with yeah. what we know. I'll fix the uh, the errors that we have about a couple of things we know in six years instead of five years. But I think that's the only change that I would expect for Monday on this sheet. Well, also pushing the pickup out another year. Yes. That you already will, did that. That'll take care of our twenty thousand dollars issue. Yeah, that, that one I, I've done here. That one's pretty straightforward. Okay. I'm going to mark it on here, though, so I remember that I did. Uh, but yeah, we'll make it, that change too. So that'll be fine. So that bring, I can't see it from here, but I'm guessing it brings it up to about 55,000. 56, uh, 56 is our low year is about 56,000. Okay. So, yeah, we may not need to, we may decide not to put any into this. Yeah. Okay. No. And like I said, I, I increase the amount that I'm estimating in future years to pay in interest. I will only increase it by 1%, but that's, yep. I don't have a lot of information about what that's going to look like yet. So I'm increasing honestly this year, we might increase it again, honestly, next year. Yeah, probably will. I have a question. Yep. I'm not sure if it's the best for right now or when we're off the record. The read screen, Evan and Beth have seen it. it. The read screen itself is in good shape for screen. It's the motor. There's <clears throat> I didn't ask if to deal with the replacement, I mean, it's 90 to 100,000. But if we were just to put a motor, you know, a diesel motor, that's anywhere like eight to 10,000, we wouldn't have to replace the rest of it. Because the rest of it's in really good shape. It's in pretty good shape for its age. It's just the motor that was getting tired by the gas and stuff that I showed have been. It would be really nice to have a new one with a hopper on it, too. You can, can add things to equipment. Yep. Which is good point. You can add things like that to equipment. I mean, you could add it by a conveyor instead of a conveyor. Well, I, did, yeah, I was just thinking a way to save. We're budgeting some a lot of money. I think that's smart. Yeah, where it's going to be in five years, who knows? We might just say contract services are working great. Let's get rid of it. It's just an idea. Yeah, a good idea to put in the mold. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah, which we could just put in small equipment, right? <laughs> I would say that, I mean, yeah, it would go under small equipment or repairs. Or if you're saying short term that we should plan on that, that's a good thing to bring up. And if it helps reduce the $22,000 that we spent in excess of our sand and gravel budget by $8,000, it seems like we'd have a motor for free. Why do you want to? Just like me. So going into our cash on hand, um, and do correct me if you see any dates marked wrong. This is a second I haven't had for anybody else. I haven't had a second that I don't have a yet. So dates. Uh, if I assign something 
to uh, 18, 19, instead of 19, 20, or uh, if I assign something to the wrong year. I can't get to the electronic file, unfortunately. I can't help you out with that. Okay. So we'll just go from the one that that's projected. Can you, while you're talking about it, just put your, like, highlight that cell so you can see the cell yeah. reference? So starting with this, the estimated uh, cash on hand balance from 1920 and FY21 uh, is going to be $175,145. We get into our actual cash reserves. Are Can I ask the question already? Yeah. <laughs> on the 175000 that's not a calculated number. So when we start talking about removing the economic developer and the other funds, oh, that's for the chip, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, this, this might change for the estimates that we've made based on the end of uh, FY21. Okay. So there, there might be some tweaks to that, and it's not a calculated number. So I, I do have to review that one before publicating. Okay. All right. Uh, the we have in cash eight hundred fifty-one thousand two hundred twenty-eight dollars. There are a number of places where that money is dedicated to. Our reserve funds. Uh, money that's due from one entity to another, places where we might be counting. So, of the places that the money is due, we have a subtotal of $686,082, which leaves us an actual. Uh, cash balance from uh, FY21, which is the closed year of $175,145.35. Last year, we reserved, we estimated that we would have 161000 left in cash. So we reserve a hundred thousand to reserve to reduce the taxes, and we contributed one hundred. We contributed sixty-one thousand four hundred thirty-seven dollars to the tax anticipation reserve. Pretty good estimation. Yeah. So we ended FY twenty-one with thirteen thousand seven hundred eight dollars on committed. Out of our three million something budget, we got down to thirteen thousand dollars positive that wasn't reserved for other expenses. So we didn't run a deficit, and we didn't like blow it out of the water. We had tons of cash left, and who knows why? Well, nobody could say we're hoarding money. Yeah, yeah, everything accounted for down to a, a pretty good degree. So we have delinquent taxes uh, that are due to us, and we also have uh, the uncommitted balance from 1920, which gives us uh, and a, an estimated end of year, which is currently $68,980. So, can I just ask why we have an uncommitted balance from this year 20? Like, I'm trying to understand all these pieces, and yep. if, if we take surplus and we typically apply it to reserves, why would there be an uncommitted balance of cash? Turn, turn to the back. Question that I 
Wasn't that after we reconciled all the books? The 168 is what we uh, had that was uncommitted. We closed out the year. I believe that's the case. But I have. And it's an actual number. It's like, this should be what's left over from banking place, which this should be an actual tangible. It's cash. Sure. It's cash we have. I get that part. Like, yeah. but if it's cash we have, how does it differ from the cash we had when we closed the books initially? Because that implies that there's a difference, right, from the previous number, from the actual cash balance. I mean, is it like delinquent taxes that were paid after we closed the books? Therefore, we have more cash on hand. Yes. It does include delinquent. You add the two delinquent and yes. the actual, it equals the one. Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, perfect. So Thank those you. delinquent taxes were paid. They're not paid, but we are allowed to count them as cash. assets. They are. It's so it's not cash on hand. It's not, it's not cash, cash on hand. So the COA does imply that cash on hand. It's not cash on hand, but it is an asset of the town. Yes. The assumption that I got is that that eventually does come in. Okay. That and our current, our current estimated end of year cash on that balance of $68,980. Is it really cash on hand, sir? I'm going to get caught on the terms because this is going to screw me up all the time yep. when I think about it. It's not really cash on hand. It's really uh, cash assets. Cash assets is a better term than cash on balance because very little of this is actually uncommitted. Right. And the cash on hand is actually that blue line on row 470. Actual yes. cash is cash on hand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So our total balance of cash assets is at the end of the current fiscal year. So at, as of the coming July 1st or June 30th, is estimated to be $237,284. With the bulk of that being? That's assuming that all delinquent taxes are zero now. Yes. Has that ever happened? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just want to be clear, we're looking at a big number that's heavily based on something that never happens. No, no, we we get pretty well cleaned up though. We collect 99% of that. I mean, you know, it's eventually. Yeah. It's just that we hold it. But the only thing that we can't recover. We, we, we have a resolve all of it in some fashion. So that gets into our proposed reservations of what do we want to do with the estimated cash on hand. Strictly speaking, all of it except for Hollywood gets returned to the voters. We can propose to increase line items over what they might traditionally be. And this is how we handled it. Uh, we kind of came to this uh, decision working with Walter about how to account for it. We can, you know, if we want to donate more money to the equipment fund, we can raise that equipment fund above what it would typically be in its rotation and then count that as contributed to taxes to pay the difference. So it will not have an effect on. We can make some changes to a couple line items and it will not have an effect on the tax rate because we're donating that money back to reduce taxes. Well, it's not going to take very much. And it's all to the voters' approval. Yes. By laying it out here, the voters are sanctioning what we're proposing. Right. Yeah. I have four areas that I would think are highest priority that I would recommend. 
reducing taxes. Uh, the issue with donating everything to a straight reduction is that if we did run a deficit, we would in effect be running a double deficit because we would be running the deficit and we wouldn't have the money that we said we were going to use to lower taxes. Mm. So we don't want to, we want to be very careful about what we use as a strict reduction. We don't have the luxury here. Say again, we don't have the luxury like Montpelier and Washington. No. Because it, if we apply this to reduce taxes, the voters are approved, are voting on a set budget for the amount to be raised by taxes. When we set our tax rate, we can't adjust it. If we later on find out that we don't get the 273,000, we only get, right, you know, whatever. Um, if we've only committed 100,000, then we're still above water. And if we have, Proposed putting the rest into a tax reserve fund or whatever, have you here? We don't have to do it because we don't have the money. Yeah. If we were going to think about how we apply it back, we would want to strictly talk about what we already have, like the, the cash on hand versus cash assets, and also expect that all of our taxes do are not going to come in. There's going to be just like one. Okay. And the, the tax anticipation fund. Is was it ten percent of our budget is what we could have? It's, it's some reason like that. Fund. It's not. It would be great if it was our first quarter, but it's not our first quarter. Mm. Uh, it's ten percent or fifteen percent. It's kind of an odd calculation. Whatever our budgeted number is, you can have a reserve fund of some percentage of that. And where it works well for us is we have so many bills that come due July first. And we haven't collected any taxes yet. Right. So having in that reserve fund, you know, the sheriff's patrol, the sheriff's communications, yada yada yada. Yeah, we have an estimated three hundred thirty-one thousand dollars that's due before we collect taxes. Okay. Yep. So that's why we've tried to keep that up somewhere near to that ten percent. Yeah. Right now it's at two hundred ninety thousand. Uh, this is a good place for us to allocate some of that money because as it comes in, we can fill it in. And, and if, if it, like you're ever saying, if it ends up being, we don't get it as soon as we think we would because it's hard to collect taxes or we calculated something wrong, we're okay. Uh, same with, I, I think, a couple other reserve funds that always, we could always put, we'll spend whatever money we have in them, our, our uh, capital for. Building to ground center capital for highway equipment. You know, we will spend all the money that we have in you know, those, those line items. But the last three line items don't hurt us if we don't. You know, those are all funds that are well, currently well managed and have uh, reasonable access to them. So whatever our best in estimate is of what we're going to have at the end of the year is that 237000 we have to show to the voters to the penny where that money will be going. Yeah. And have we ever had to? I know we've authorized it to, for you to borrow money, but have we had to do it? So Good answer, Rosemary. It's a great answer. Not that Hopefully the interest rates to today would make that big a deal, but in the past, you know, when interest rates were something significantly more, it's a savings to the town by having this money. Interest rates are going up this year. They are. Yeah. Interest rates are starting to increase. So they're talking about four increases this year. So um, does the board have, we don't have an exact number for this yet until you know, all of our calculations are done. Because we propose a couple changes to our estimated end of year. So this is going to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. Do you have any input for me on how to assign? Like your priorities, you want to see my own thing. Project. Your picks are fine. Uh, I think we should look at our priority list. I think that would no, be he easier. has a priority list. He does. Of course he does. I put all my priorities at the top. 
uh, if you put bring the priority list to uh, our next meeting, because we'll have to assign that money at some point. Matt would like it assigned to the trailhead building. <laughs> it could be. Should we think Why about? Give us your input. Yeah. Should we think about possibly the reappraisal reserve fund as well? Because that's that's, that's going to get crazy expensive in the ten year. Yeah. Can you add that one there? <laughs> I will. That's that's a really good. Huh? And a creamy machine. Yeah. He's going yeah. places. And a creamy machine <laughs> for here. How about a coffee machine? Um, the other thing over at the That's a good one. I like it, Eric. Ah, uh, the website is another one that is on my mind. Oh, uh, I did increase our uh, computer support line item to reflect the increased cost in our web hosting, and I gave us uh, thousand or two thousand dollars for our contribution to the website, which is. Assuming the village is something similar, we should be in a good spot for a uh, one of the hand websites that were very reasonably customized. They would not give us a from the ground up, from the scratch website, but it would get us, you know, it would pay for the onboarding, for example, of the companies that we saw last time. Yeah. And the only other item, if we're pretty much wrapped up on the budget, is we have some discussion on the town meeting. We anticipate that the governor will probably sign where we could do the Australian ballot again. Uh, this year, we do not have to decide tonight. We've got some time, but if you want to start thinking about it, want to express opinions. I did hear from Dave Williams. His preference is to have a regular town meeting. He just sees the value in having the dialogue back and forth and uh, justifying the budget to the voters and all that. Uh, but that's just his opinion. Obviously, he's just the moderator. But that's more political board members thought. Town meeting. Yeah. Say that again, my friend. You can move it to a different date. Say if you want to do it in the middle of May. I push it back. I feel like if there's pushback on the budget, we need to go through the whole process of the vote. Yeah, to your point, you wouldn't want to wait too long because we need to be able to set the tax rate so the tax bills out for July 1st. Uh, so I think some towns wait until June. And to your point, that would be too late. You'd have to reschedule another town meeting. But Rosemary's suggesting to some date held in March. I'd like to hold it as regular. I mean, at this point, that could change. But schools are open, businesses are open. And it, it should be noted, uh, two of you whose terms are up this year, that if the town meeting gets moved out, your your term does not end March 1st. That's move it out. <laughs> That's why that was one to move it out. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing I thought. <laughs> your, your term ends at town meeting, so it be, however, if we extend it out for a year, sorry, Matt. <laughs> I propose we extend it out for a year. How's it right now? We should just stay where it is. Stay March first. Regular town meetings. That's what it is. I think there's benefits of it being a state like state requires your ability to take time off like it's legally you're you're obligated to yeah. honor that and i think that's a good thing i, I would support it i i i too personally support the regular town meeting i, I just think there's a lot of value in it staying there justifying you know we want the people's money to perform the duties of the town and if we can't stand there and justify how we want to spend their money, they should have the last say. 
I do think we should try to set it up so that people can join remotely though, because I don't think we should put people at a disadvantage who have a medical reason that they can't attend in person. They can't vote remotely. They but cannot, they could, I don't think they can move it. They could voice okay. a thought or opinion. Okay. I mean, that would be that could be a can of arms too. Though. More technology. Need a moderator. I mean, I would happily moderate it. We just need a moderator. I mean, David's the moderator in person, and he's the moderator, and I could speak on behalf of people, give them their voice, and we would have to make sure that logistically things are set up. But they would have to understand if they can't vote. Sure. Yep. <laughs> We should visit, revisit, you know, look at some safety things. So, you know, gallons of hand sanitizer. Yeah. Think about whether food's going to be served or not. I, yeah, I mean, that's probably a good suggestion we would have is maybe no food. Well, we'll look at well, the school out of use the facility. Is there, so there's no spectators at school sports. Well, at the elementary school, um, there are spectators allowed. At the high school, there are not. Mm -hmm. um, so it probably depends on the number of attendees. That will have to be taken into consideration too. Well, that's a good yeah. point. I'll try and talk to Pat and Dave yeah, before Monday and see if I can get an answer. Up. If but, we can't do it in the school, can't we do it in the what's the old building, art studio, law with the town hall? Yeah, good pack everybody. Yeah. yeah. No, the you're talking about the uh, stage, the, aud the auditorium. <laughs> no, the old town hall. The old town hall. Well, let's check it all. I'm not gonna run again, by the way. You're not. No. Are you gonna make a one more? That'll be in the front porch one. Do you know if there's any petition for the Well, then we'll come back again. Yeah. How many do we have? The governor signs this um, order. No, no petition will be required for this year. So okay. I'll, they just have to sign the consent form. Are there any consent forms? Or are there any out? There's two out. Nobody's brought anything back yet. Okay. Um, one for each. Are they both for the same time? They're both for the three year? Two year. They're both for the two year. Thank you, everybody. People want to call it their foot snacks. Cool. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, what do we have for other articles? I guess we're going to talk about that. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, I'll have a draft. For it. We do have the article on the school merge question. We're waiting for the attorney. Yeah, that's one that we might still be in draft form on. We'll get the attorney voted. We'll have it soon. Okay. So it's adjourned at 6 o'clock. Nice. Thanks for coming, Jason. Yeah, no problem.